All the animals are in the front of the house today. We have the sheep and the goats just kind of hanging out in the front yard. And the chickens, we recently just moved over into the garden area. The chickens really seem to be liking getting access to all the garden scraps they're finding around. I have some treats to give them. They always like treats. Look, they're coming running now. They know what time it is. Treat time. chickens. This morning we actually took three of our roosters over to my sister's house. She's going to be taking them to our local chicken auction to get rid of them for us. We had four roosters and that was just a little bit too many for our flock. So now we just have the one. We decided to keep this black one that hatched out of either a blue or a black egg, but it has really pretty blue undertones to its feathers. Well, kind of like a blue green sheen. I think he's really pretty. Let's see if there's any eggs. I need to put some new bedding in here today. Uh one egg all the way over there. Thanks. Me, me, me. Ryan already collected a bunch of eggs this morning, so just one from this afternoon. Speaking of Ryan, here he comes now. Ryan's gonna put the bedding in the chicken coop for me and shovel out the old stuff too. Every once in a while, we just clean out the chicken coop shavings. We don't do it every week, just whenever it gets dirty and looks kind of gross <laughs> and looks like it needs cleaning up. In the winter months, it definitely seems like the shavings get dirtier a lot faster. The chickens are probably spending a little more time inside the coop to stay out of the cold and also just wet weather makes things get dirtier a lot faster. It's definitely a pretty satisfying job to watch, seeing it go from dirty to nice and clean and fresh for the chickens. Having the fresh bedding always makes the eggs a little bit cleaner and nice too, because inevitably the chickens tend to kick up the bedding out of their nesting boxes. One day we may experiment with a different material in the nesting boxes to try to alleviate that issue. The chicken coop was pretty dirty. Ryan went through and just scooped all the old poop and shavings out and the chickens have a nice new fresh layer of bedding for tonight. They typically roost right here on this bar. I believe this bar was not in our initial chicken coop build video. We've had a lot of people comment on our chicken coop video asking what the dimensions of the water system are. So the main part of the pipe is four inch pipe. Now I just have a couple of different four inch angles coming down and then a reducer that goes from a four inch to a two inch. And then the water nipples are attached to that two inch pipe. You'll need a various angles to get down to get that two inch pipe wrapped around, but that's the gist of it. Here's another angle so you can see it better. Let's go give the goats some minerals. Nothing fancy, but we just store the goat minerals and sheep minerals and feed and stuff in these big black trash cans. Since we're on the topic of animals, let me fill you guys in on what happened a few weeks ago. The sheep are eagerly awaiting some new friends. They're all talking to each other, which I think is kind of fun. Ryan's currently working on setting up the fence to kind of make a shoot to get our new animals out of the trailer and into the field with their friends. How did you lose your ear tag? This one's ear tag fell off somewhere. It'll be lucky if we can find that in the middle of the field. So we just got four registered Katahdin and ewes and one registered Katahdin and ram. We're gonna add to our flock um, to do some breeding and hopefully have some lambs this spring. This is a new adventure for us. We're gonna open the gate and they're gonna come on out. You're so excited? 
Ryan has the center divider up, so he's just moving that so they can get on out. Yeah. That's it. Oh, our other use we got were a mix between Katahdin and Dorfer. I don't know what exactly the mix is, but they're they're definitely smaller. I think Dorfer are more meaty. I'm gonna turn this fence on so they learn what that is. We've been keeping our paddocks pretty small and using this electric netting to move them every couple days. You can really tell the difference between the green grass and the browner grass where they just were. The ram is over here to the left side of the frame. He has hair on his chest and kind of in between his front two legs. He's definitely the biggest one. He's sniffing out all the new people or lambs, I should say. It's kind of funny hearing everyone talking. All the ewes are making a lot of noise. They're definitely very vocal. They're kind of segregated too. The right side is the new group and the left side is our original flock. So hopefully everyone will get along and become best friends before you know it. The new ones are definitely going to town eating some grass. So they're enjoying the fresh pasture. We still need to clean up the other half of the garden. That's on the to-do list. The other day I was able to plant a bunch of garlic and flower bulbs and I recorded a video of that that I'll insert here. I don't think the weather knows what it's doing today. It is so warm and nice outside, but we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna plant some garlic and some flowers. My sister helped me the other day. I put a video up already of us clearing out a bunch of the beds. There's our big debris pile. I still need to take care of that and finish clearing out the rest of the garden. These long skinny beds still need to be cleared out too. It was really nice to have her help the other day though to get that job done because that's definitely a task that goes by a lot faster when you have some helping hands. I wanna start with the garlic and then we'll go plant the flower bulbs closer to the house. This bed here has a little bit of perennial Egyptian walking onion in it. When I was clearing out the beds the other day, I noticed a lot of these seed pods or they kind of just look like miniature little onion bulbs kind of scattered all over the place. I wanna to try to see how many of these I can find and plant them as well amongst the garlic because each one of these little individual sections will be a whole new Egyptian walking onion plant and there's probably like I don't know 10 15 on this one little head I'm not sure exactly what these are called but this is what makes the Egyptian walking onions this bed here also had ground cherries in it and there's lots of ground cherries still all over the bed so I'm sure we'll get quite a few volunteer ground cherry plants in this bed next year too the ground cherries are these little uh, fruit that's inside of a paper husk. These ones have all been hit by a frost so they're a little mushy but my kids are still coming out here and eating them so they must still taste pretty good. But back to the garlic. I have a couple different heads here in my overalls. These are two that I grew last year. Most of my garlic that we harvested from this year's crop that we planted last year was turned into garlic powder because they had started to split and they just weren't curing properly because I harvested them a little late. But these are two heads that I set to the side to plant because they looked the best. As you can see, they're fully encased in the papery casing. The other stuff, since I harvested it late, kind of split open and cracked and wasn't fully enveloped in the paper casing anymore. So it wasn't curing properly. So we went ahead and dehydrated all that and turned it into garlic powder. But these cloves, I held on to to plant. And then when we were also at the grocery store last night, I noticed they had elephant garlic. So I got two of those to plant as well. Elephant garlic was my favorite variety that I've grown the last two years. I'd been looking for it online the last couple weeks. I waited kind of to the last minute to try to order garlic this year and it was either out of stock or they wanted a ridiculous amount of money for it. So I just got this at Walmart. It was, I wanna say $1.99. I'll go back and look at my receipt and put the exact price on the screen for you guys, 
but it was cheap and it was a lot cheaper than the elephant garlic I'd been seeing online. So I went ahead and thought we'd give it a try this year. So this is what we're planting today. For planting garlic, in order to get an entire head of garlic, all you have to do is plant one individual clove. I'm gonna try to break these garlic up the best I can without getting them damaged. But this whole clove of garlic will plant an entire head. These are some pretty big cloves. Let's see how many you can get. There's two. Oh, and that's one giant clove. Okay, so this one head of garlic just had three cloves on it. So that'll make three heads of garlic. But let's go ahead and break down the rest of these. Today does not feel like fall. It's about 70 degrees or so today. And we've been having some crazy weather. It was in the 50s yesterday. And the day before it was in the 80s. So I'm sure all the kids and I are bound to get sick but, but we are enjoying the warm weather. This one took a little extra effort to get it apart. And since it's warm, I thought I would get this stuff in the ground. I'm a little later on planting garlic, but I'm hoping it'll do okay since it is so warm and we've been having some warm days. We've had a busy week this week. Earlier this week, we got new sheep. Ryan picked up a ram for our Katahdin sheep. And he came home with not only a ram, but four other ewes too. So now we have a total of 13 sheep in our herd. We have the Katahdin hair sheep, which is a meat breed that doesn't have to be sheared. So it's a little bit lower maintenance. We don't have to deal with the shearing process. But we should have a lot of babies this coming spring in our flock so that'll be pretty exciting so subscribe to see lots of cute lamb babies in the spring this is the walmart garlic that i'm peeling now it's got some pretty big sized cloves this particular head of garlic is not organic it didn't say anything about being organic but i'm going to be growing it without any pesticides in it so it'll be pretty much organic when i pull it out of the ground i like the elephant garlic because it produces really big heads of garlic and really big cloves this is one clove that's pretty cool. The last couple years that I've grown garlic, I've grown the elephant garlic variety. And I had some garlic heads that were almost the size of a softball. I mean, they were pretty big. And one clove was giant. I've had some people comment in the comments that they think elephant garlic is milder than normal garlic. And I find that to be true about half the time. Maybe it's just my garlic. Some of the garlic is milder, but some of the garlic has been very, very pungent and strong and just like a normal clove of garlic. So I'm not sure if that's just my garlic or if all elephant garlic's that way, but from the comments that some people have said that typically elephant garlic is more mild. So we'll see. The last couple years that I've planted garlic, I've put Espoma garden tone in the hole and this is a heavy bag. <laughs> and a Spoma Biotone starter in the hole. I've done about a tablespoon in each hole with each individual clove of garlic. And it's worked well for me the last two years, so if it ain't broke, I'm not going to fix it. We're going to try that again this year. I'm going to be spacing the garlic about every four to six inches and burying them in the soil about two inches deep so that there's two inches above each clove of garlic and one clove in each hole with the pointy side up because the flat spot on the bottom is where the roots will grow out of. I'm gonna pop some of the Egyptian walking onions in some holes too when I see them. I just found another clump of Egyptian walking onions 
and two of them have already started to sprout, just kind of laying on the surface. I mean, each one of these will be its own onion. So I could separate them and I just got a lot more plants. This whole bed's now filled with garlic and Egyptian walking onions. I noticed on my way into the garden today, there's actually two garlic plants that kind of planted themselves, or maybe I just missed them during harvest and they were younger, but they're growing here in the original beds that I harvested garlic from earlier this season. I just ran into the house to get my basket full of flower bulbs. I have a couple different varieties that I need to get planted. I have blue and white hyacinth flowers, planted all along the edge of this garden bed here next to the house and it continues all the way down and wraps around to the front. The blue and white hyacinths I kind of goofed on when I planted them and I missed a big section in between uh, these hydrangeas so I need to try to figure out where those are and plant the replacement ones to fill in that gap because hyacinths come back every year for me here. The story is on that. I transplanted a bunch of hyacinth bulbs from our old house when we moved here and then I tried to remember where I ended that planting to plant a bunch more and I started too far up and I left a big gap in between. So now I'm coming back to fill in that line so that the hyacinths continue all the way along the edge of the house. Speaking of pretty flowers, I walked over here to the front of the house because my camellia bush here in the corner was blooming the other day. It looks like the blooms on this camellia bush are now uh, mushy because of the frost, but I have some video I took the other day that I could put in here of the flowers. They had such pretty white flowers on them and I see a bunch more buds coming on. So that's really nice. The blooms, look rather mushy now though. There's a bunch of new buds coming on and a few that are just starting to open up. So we're gonna have some more camellia flowers here soon. I really like camellias. I think they're fun. There's not too many bushes and plants that bloom and flower all winter long for you. And that one's cold hardy and gives us some flowers in the colder weather. Thankfully, I have a gardening YouTube channel because I was able to go back and watch my flower bulb tour from this past spring to see exactly where I missed planting the hyacinths. So hopefully we get our digging and planting perfect for that. Here where the hyacinths are going to be planted, there's actually daffodils popping up. The daffodils are maybe four inches tall. I'm not sure why they're growing already. Daffodils normally don't start sprouting here until like January, February. That's the earliest I've seen them. But there's a bunch of them popping up. So hopefully they do well all winter in the really cold weather. We'll find out in the spring, I guess. Hyacinths are one of my favorite flowers just because of the smell. They smell so lovely and I think they look kind of pretty too. Just like I did with the garlic, I'm gonna put some biotone starter in each hole just for kicks and giggles. I'm also gonna plant some crocus. These pretty little purple flowers Ryan picked up for me the other day at Lowe's. That was a sweet little surprise. I got a couple packs of these. I'm gonna plant those around. And then my mother-in-law gifted me some irises. So I'm gonna pop those into the ground too. I'm just gonna plant some flowers around the bottom. Here, you wanna grab a handful of fertilizer for me? Yeah. This is a yellow sunny side knockout rose. And I'm gonna put the pretty little Crocus all underneath it in the front. You play the 
hole. Yep, put it right there. My helper is getting some fertilizer. Thank you. You want to help me plant some? Mm -hmm. Here. You see the pointy side? Mm -hmm. Needs to be sticking up. Well, we'll just do it when we're all done then. Push it down. Thank you for your help. Bye. The irises we planted just right behind that rose too. It's speeding again is the purple blue one and immortality is the white variety. It's always fun to have a few extra flowers popping up first thing of the spring after a long winter. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all have a great rest of your day. There's a bug in my hair. Ooh, there's a bug in my hair. <laughs> Bye y'all.